What's better than satisfying animations? Well, maybe a satisfying animation involving thousands, if not millions, of round Orbeez slash 3D rendered bulb. Balls. Bulbs. It's Christmas time, it could be bulbs. I don't know, it's whatever you want. <laughs> That's right guys, in this video we're back with a satisfying animation tutorial in Blender 3D and it's involving a large ball simulation. You can do all sorts of things with this tutorial, creating satisfying animations for Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. So I can't wait to see all the cool, crazy animations that I'm sure you guys will be creating after watching this tutorial. Before we get started, a quick thanks to MSI for being the sponsor of this video. The MSI Creator Z17, my personal favorite laptop from 2022, is the perfect laptop for artists, creators, and even high-end professionals. It pairs quite nicely with MSI's 32-inch Rapid IPS 175 hertz display for a powerful combo combo of mobility and productivity. Learn more later on in the video and check out these products with the first links in the video description. All right, so fire up Blender, and we're gonna start off here creating a quick, simple scene for our massive Orbeez animation. So believe it or not, we'll use the default cube here. I'm just gonna hit S and five to scale it up five times, but I'll scale it up taller by going S, Z, and two. Then hitting Z to switch to wireframe mode, I'll add in a second cube here. This is going to be the start of some stairs within our little building here. So to keep everything easy, I'm gonna hold down control every time I move an object here to snap it to the grid. So hitting G and then holding control, I'll move the cube over to the inside edge of our original cube here. Here, then hit 7 on your number pad to jump to top view and move it over to the corner. Here I'll shift D, duplicate that cube again, again moving it holding control so I'm stamping it to the grid. Then I want to scale it along the Z and X axis but not along the Y axis. So to do this you hit S to scale and then shift Y to scale on everything but the Y axis. Here I'll scale it to a size of 3, so hit 3 on your number pad. That will be the perfect size for our scene here. Next, here's a very cool easy tip to add stairs to any cube in Blender. We're going to switch to edge select mode by clicking it up in the corner here or hitting 2 on our keyboard, grab the corner edge there and go control B to add a bevel to the object. We're going to bevel this all the way down to one cube's width on the grid here. Then if you bring up your bevel tool options in the bottom left corner here, we can choose a profile type of custom and then change the preset over to be steps. You can see this gives us a grid of steps but you're not seeing anything on your mesh yet because we need to change the segment amount. I'll give these segments something like 12. Then you can see something happening on your mesh. Then if you choose the preset steps again now, it makes nice even steps across your cube. This is perfect put a few more steps than I want. I want the steps to follow the blender grid scale there. So I'm going to change the segment number to 10 and then choose steps again. And you can see that fits perfectly in our blender scene here. Next, grab both these cubes. Now hit control J to make them a single object. Hover over your stairs and hit L to select it. Then hit G again, holding down control and snap that staircase up to our original cube, which will be the platform for the staircase. Now, if you switch to face select mode by grabbing it or hitting three on your keyboard, you can hit G and hold control again and pull the bottom face down so we have a level surface here. Now we can just grab it holding control again to move it down to the floor. We can shift D it, move it towards the middle, hit R to rotate 90 degrees and move it over to the left of our cube here. Jumping to side view, you grab it along the Z axis, holding control again to snap it up to the appropriate height. Jump to top view, duplicate it a third time, rotate it 90 degrees and move it into the top corner here. We have a nice little staircase inside of our building to fill up with Orbeez. Now I'm just gonna grab the top face on our large cube here and move it up a bit higher so we have room for a door at the top of those stairs. If I go into material view, we can't see anything because of this cube. So I'm going to jump to my materials real quick, add in a second material. If you don't already have one added, add in two of them. And for the second one, I'm just gonna scroll down in my material settings here and give it an alpha value of zero. Then under the settings blend mode, change it to alpha clip. So you can see it in the material preview here. Grab the two faces on our large cube facing the camera and assign that new transparent material to it. Perfect, now we can see through the walls, but the walls are still there, so they will collide with our giant Orbeez simulation and not just go flying everywhere. If you want to jump to rendered view here in Eevee, you can place the default lamp up in the corner here. I found that looked kind of nice for the simulation. Then you can hide your large cube, grab all three sections of the staircase and hit Control J to make them a singular object. Then in edit mode, you can grab the bottom faces of both these staircases and pull them straight down along the Z axis, 
holding G and control again to snap them all to the floor. Now we want to cut a door out of the right side face here for all of our Orbeez to come pouring out of. So to do this, I'm going to grab the right face there and hit Y to separate it from the mesh. Then go ahead and select the top face as well and just delete it. We don't need that and deleting it will let light into our scene nicely. Then go control R and on that face that you separated, put in a loop cut, slide it over to be in line with your staircase, then put in a second one horizontally and slide it up to be at the top of the staircase. Switch to face select mode, Grab that door face now and extrude it out so we have a long hallway to start filling up with 3D balls. Jump to rendered view and you'll see there's a few faces here that are visible. We want them all to be transparent on this little hallway. So go ahead and grab those faces and assign the transparent material to them. Now we need an object to emit all of our Orbeez or 3D balls or whatever you want to call them from. So for this, I'll just use the monkey head because why not? It's fun. Move the monkey head to the end of our little hallway, making sure it's placed inside of it and not poking out from any corner. Then go ahead and grab your building and your stairs and control J to make it all one mesh so we can easily add collisions to everything. Speaking of collisions, it's time to get into physics. So for starters, you're gonna wanna make sure you download the free Molecular Plus add-on. There'll be a GitHub link in the description. Once you've downloaded it, jump to the preferences here, go to your add-ons page and click install. Locate the zip file that you downloaded, select it and click install add-on. If you switch to user installed add-ons here, make sure that the physics molecular plus add-on is enabled. If it is enabled, once you hit N to open up your properties tab, you will see it along the tabs here along the right. Starting with collider, you'll want to select our building object and then click collider to add collisions to our stairs and walls. You can see we have a few settings here, but if we jump to our physics tab, we'll have even more settings. I'm just going to click and drag the four settings between dampening and randomize and boost them up to a 0.7 and a 0.2 for the randomized value. Values. I found this to be a good middle ground for some realistic collisions. Then you're going to select your Suzanne monkey head and then click the emitter option in your molecular plus add-on settings. Now we need something for this monkey head to emit, so we're going to go shift A and add in the UV sphere. We can right click and choose shade smooth. Then if you select your Suzanne head and go to your particle settings, you'll see the add-on automatically added a particle system. Here there's a few settings you'll want to change though because we want to make the simulation longer. So starting with the endpoint, make it a thousand frames and then for the lifetime again make these a thousand frames. Also in the molecular plus add-on, change the end frame to 1000. Now if you click start simulation, you'll see it's emitting a bunch of small particles, but it's not emitting our Orbeez yet. And that's because under the particle settings, we want to go under render, change it from render as halo to render as object. And that object is going to be the UV sphere that we added. Then change the size to 0.2. I found this to be a nice scale for the scene and check rotation. Then under the drop down, also check dynamic. This is very important and will give you some better looking Orbeez physics within the molecular plus add-on. Then you're set up to start your animation. So click the start simulation button and watch your 3D balls completely flood and take over our little scene here. Pretty satisfying to watch it actually calculate in real time. And honestly, I'm really impressed with the molecular plus add-on. I haven't had any crashes and it's just a ton of fun to play around with. Fast forward a little bit and our simulation is finished. Now the animation could be rendered in EV or cycles. It works actually quite well in both. And if you have slower hardware, maybe you want to render with EV, but if you have fast your hardware, it always looks better to render in cycles. And of course, change it to GPU compute because if you have a fast GPU, like the one in MSI's Creator Z17, the RTX 3080, this will render really fast in cycles. And that's looking really cool. If you have any faces intersecting like I have here a little bit, just grab them and scale them a tiny little bit so you don't have any faces intersecting with each other, giving you some sort of weird looking shading. All right, so like I often do when I'm gonna render something in cycles here, I'll start off by going to our world settings and opening up an environment texture. Click open and then load up an HDR. You can get HDRs from HDR Haven with the link in the video description. The one I'm using here is the Colorful Studio HDR. This looks quite nice in cycles. And all I'm going to do is split my window here open up a shader editor on the left hand side and then change it from object to world. Grab that HDR control T. If you have the node regular add on enabled, it adds in a mapping and texture coordinate node view. And I'm just going to rotate it along the Z axis to give our scene a little bit more interesting lighting, casting some shadows from the wall on the right onto the left. And I thought that looks just a little bit more dramatic, but now we're ready to render all of those 3d balls. So with our sphere selected, we'll change our shader editor back to object and add in a new material. Now here's a really cool trick for adding a bunch of different colors to a material. I'm going to split my window, change it to a UV 
UV editor and open up an image that I grabbed off the internet. This is just a ball pile with a whole bunch of different colored balls in it. Super easy to find off Google Images and you can find whatever sort of color combination of balls you want. Then in my shader editor, I'm gonna go Shift A, add in color ramp. Connect this to the base color on our principal shader node, then add in a second node under input. This will be the object info node. Connect the random value up to the factor on our color ramp. That gives our Orbeez a random color of anything you have within this gradient under the color ramp. Now I'm gonna change the color ramp from linear to constant. Now if you hover your mouse cursor over the gradient on your color ramp and go Alt E, this is a really cool shortcut, it brings up an eyedropper and it allows you to select a multitude of colors by just clicking on different objects now within your Blender viewport. So with the eyedropper, I'm just gonna go around on this ball image that I opened up here, clicking the different colors, and as you can see, it automatically is adding all of those colors to the color ramp here. Super quick shortcut to get a bunch of different colors into a material shader here. I'm happy with the colors, but now we can make the balls look a little bit more like Orbeez. So for starters, I'm gonna add in a second color ramp node and connect this to the roughness value on our principled shader. Then I'll go Shift A and add in a texture, noise texture. Connect the factor up to the factor on this new color ramp. Give it a smaller scale and some detail. And then just crunch the black and white on that color ramp a bit. And this just makes the reflections on those Orbeez look a little bit more interesting. And here's the most interesting interesting trick now, if you give yourself a little bit more room and duplicate your principled shader, go shift A and add in a mix shader, connect both the principled shaders now to this mix shader, giving the top principled shader the same colors as the bottom one. What you're going to do on this one though, is give it a very low roughness value and then take the transmission all the way up to one. This is going to make it look more like a glass ball, a lot more like Orbeez or just something more interesting. Now I'm going to go shift A and add in one more node. Under the input it is going to be the layer weight node, connect the Fresnel output to the factor on the mix shader and then just play around with this blend value. I found 0.7 or 0.8 to work quite nicely. And if you've seen like mine, you'll want to switch your inputs to have the glass shader be the top one on the mix shader here. That looks very cool and quite a bit more pleasant slash satisfying, which is the goal of this animation. You can brighten your scene up a little bit by increasing the HDR strength up to about a 1.5. And then in the render settings under color management, you can also change it to have a medium high contrast look as well as a little bit more exposure here to brighten up your scene because satisfying animations, in my opinion, need to be bright and pleasant looking. Now to frame the scene, I went with a vertical camera. So on your output settings here, change it to 1080 by 1920. And then in your 3D viewport, if you go Control Alt Zero, it will snap the camera to that view. Then you can just select your camera and move it around a little bit by hitting G and the middle mouse button to zoom in to find a nice framing for our scene here. Then there's a few camera options that make your render look a little bit more pretty as well. So go into your camera settings, enable depth of field, then under viewport display, enable limits. So you can change the distance here and anywhere you see that plus crosshairs is gonna be what's in focus on your scene. Then under the aperture setting, you can change the f-stop to something small, a 0.2 or 0.3 works pretty well in this scene. Then lastly, under render settings, enable motion blur. This is gonna add a lot to your satisfying animation. Here I'll save my project, enable denoising in the render settings as well. I like to use the optics denoiser and then give ourselves a quick test render here. Now, if you have a powerful GPU in your computer, you can actually play this animation back in real time in cycles, which is just insane. I never thought I'd be saying that, but that is where technology in hardware like we have in the MSI Creator Z17 enables you to do today. Not only does MSI's Z17 come packed with a lot of power, but it also has a beautiful 17 inch, 165 Hertz high refresh rate display that can also do this. It comes with a large 90 watt hour battery that somehow fits into a super slim modern design. Pair this with MSI's large 32 inch monitor and you have an incredible productivity setup as well as the mobility that you get with a laptop. Check out MSI's Creator Z17 with the first link in the video description. So I'll just enable denoise in the viewport here and I can go ahead and play my simulation back to see what it's looking like in real time. It's really fun to see what your animation is gonna more or less look like before you render it. Of course, you don't have motion blur or anything yet. You can also do this, like I said earlier, in Eevee, if you have slower hardware. That wraps up yet another satisfying animation. I hope you guys created something cool. If you did, tag me on Instagram or TikTok or wherever you share your finished animation. I love seeing them. Hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. I will see you all in the very near future. Bye-bye.